Hey guys, Dan here. Hey, today I've got something that's really interesting. It's kind of a, a little side project I took on for somebody as a favor. It's a Aaron's Pro 28 Hydro machine, and you can see it's got no engine on it. Now, I'm not sure exactly what happened with the engine, but the bottom line is the connecting rod snapped and uh, poked a hole in the crankcase and, and basically ruined the entire engine. So uh, it's a nice machine. It's got a hydro drive, so it's infinitely variable, forward and reverse. The bucket's nice and tall. It's wide. It's a 28. It's a, a 926-053. The guy said he paid about $2,700 for it, and he just loves the machine, so he wants to hang on to it. So uh, I did a little bit of research, and I got some ideas on how I'm going to fix this thing for short money. And I'm going to share that with you today. So here's the original engine from the machine, and as you can see, it's got uh, half a connecting rod, so that's not going to work. And it's really a shame because the engine is barely used. It's only got a few hours on it, and um, unfortunately, ran it with no oil. So uh, that's what you get. You can see the um, uh, here's the camshaft from it. The um, compression release is still working on it. Uh, now here's the crankshaft. Uh, this is the crank I took out of this engine. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures of it before I started to work on it, but there was some aluminum on this um, connecting rod uh, journal here, and I was able to uh, kind of shave that off and clean it up and polish it up, and it's, um, it's fine. So um, that's part of the story, and I'll tell you about that in a second. Here's the stator coil from it, which I'm going to take off of here and put on a new engine. Um, and then here's the internal crankcase. A couple of things here. You can see the um, hone marks on the cylinder are still there. Here's a bunch of pieces of aluminum from when the engine let go of itself. These engines aren't too bad. They actually have roller bearings on the crank and, and uh, the balance shaft. Here you can see there's a hole poked in the top from a broken connecting rod. And at some point, it had some critters living uh, under the gas tank in this thing. So um, that wasn't good either. So uh, anyway. Let's talk a little bit more about what we're going to do here. So this is a Briggs 25 cubic inch engine. It's a horizontal shaft and the uh, model and type is here. This is stamped on the side of the block so that it's a 25M137. Uh, this is the original engine. It was built on 2014 August 4th. So here's a quick sheet you can use to decode a Briggs engine. The first couple of digits are the cubic inch displacement then the design series, then the crankshaft orientation, power takeoff, does it have bearings on it, uh, does it have a gear reduction or is it a race type of bearing, and then does it have electric start or does it have uh, something different, 12 volt start, 24 volt start, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So the type also includes things like does it have a throttle control or is it just on off switch, does it have an air filter, what color is it, stuff like that. So I went online starting to look around to try to find an engine for it. Uh, here's one that was $1,450 plus $150 bucks to ship it. Unfortunately, it was sold out. Uh, couldn't get it. This one would have worked. Uh, probably the electrical was a little different in it, but I could have swapped the old stuff over. So I looked some more. I found this engine. Uh, may have been on the Briggs website. It was $1,565 plus tax. Uh, says it's in stock. I don't know if it was actually in stock or not, but it was more than I wanted to spend uh, to fix this. It just doesn't make sense to spend that kind of money. So I did some more digging and I came across this um, engine here and it was very similar uh, in terms of the type, uh, but the code was different. So I knew there'd be some things that were different about it. It was a 25M137, um, but I, I knew there'd be some things that were different. And after digging in, I found out what was different about this engine. Basically, the only thing that concerned me was a three-quarter inch shaft. The original is one inch, and that's what I needed for the snowblower. So I did some digging. I looked up the crankshaft on this engine and got the part number on it. And then I went over to uh, look up the original engine and get the part number on that crankshaft as well to see if maybe those cranks were similar and maybe I could swap them out. So I spoke to the folks at Briggs and sure enough they have the same specs however that crank is nowhere to be found. Briggs and Stratton doesn't have them in stock and they don't know when they're getting them 
I called around to see if anyone had them, but it's, it's just not something you're going to find locally. So I went back and looked at the crank I took out of the engine, the original engine, and um, it had a lot of aluminum on it, which you can't see here because I've already cleaned it up in this picture. Um, so I was able to take the original crank and clean off all the aluminum uh, that was kind of sprayed around when the connecting rod broke, polish it up, mic it, and sure enough, um, it's straight and the diameter is right on the money. So he decided to take a chance, I went back to the website, ordered that engine right up, and had it shipped to my house. It was $429. I think I ordered it Thursday and it was there like Tuesday, and here it is. So it's all packed up nicely. Uh, it's got a, a bunch of bubble wrap on, around it and um, absolutely no damage. Everything's there. It's got a nice key and everything. Uh, the only thing, again, is that uh, output shaft. So we're going to have to crack the engine open and swap that shaft over. Okay, so here's our new bad boy. It's a 2100 series Briggs. It's about 14 horsepower, very similar to what we had. It's a 25M137. 0005 F1. So it's basically the same except the charging system is a little bit different. And then this bad boy, this is the problem right here, this three quarter inch shaft. Now we could have picked up one of these shaft sleeve adapters to uh, increase that diameter to one inch. But the problem is that that three quarter inch crankshaft is going to have a lot of torque on it. Uh, it's under a lot of stress and it's really likely that that would break off. So I think fixing it right is um, using the one inch crankshaft like it was originally designed with. So here's our original crankshaft. You can see it's much thicker than the three quarter inch one. It's the same length, same everything, same gears on it. So it should work out no problem. All we have to do is crack this thing open and swap all the internals. So let's start stripping this thing down. First thing I did was take the cover off that uh, goes around the fuel tank so I could get at the front recoil cover and the rear sump cover. Now I'm going to lay this thing down so I can get at the cover. So I'm going to pull off the sump cover here and the oil fill stick. I want to do it really carefully because I don't want the gears to pop out inside. Um, the timing marks on the old original engine, I couldn't see them. There's a balance shaft and a camshaft in there, so I just want to take it off carefully so I don't miss them and I can actually verify that there are some timing marks in there. So I was able to save the gasket, which is 30 bucks, and I can see the timing marks. So now we can see the internals on this engine. It's got a balance shaft closest to us and the camshaft on the other side. And I'm just verifying that I can actually see the timing marks because they were really hard to see on the old engine. So here's the two dots for the balance shaft. You can see them there. And I did see the timing marks on the camshaft and the top gear. So we should be all set. Here's a picture of the balance shaft. This is from the old engine. You see there's aluminum all over it. Just gives you an idea what that balance shaft looks like. It's basically a counterweight for the crankshaft. Here's a picture with all the internals taken out except for the crankshaft and connecting rod. You can see it's a nice little setup in there. You've got roller bearings for the balance shaft and the crank. Here I've got a plastic gauge and I wanted to see what the clearance between the connecting rod and the journal was on the brand new engine just out of curiosity and to make sure that my old crankshaft is within spec. So you can see I've got it uh, disconnected here and I'm just going to put a piece of the plastic gauge across the cap and crank it up and measure it. Here's a shot of the crushed plastic gauge on the journal. Uh, I'm going to measure it on the cap here. It's about two thousandths. Briggs doesn't have any reference manuals that tell you what the clearances are supposed to be. So I used the crate engine as a reference just to make sure that uh, my, my clearances were okay. One of the unanswered questions I had was, will I be able to pull the crankshaft out without having to take the piston all the way out or push it all the way up? And the answer is yes, you can unbolt the connecting rod uh, bolts and then slide the crank right out. So now I'm gonna take the trim off the front of the engine here so I can pop the flywheel off and actually uh, slide the crankshaft out of the new engine so I can get it ready to put the old crankshaft back in the new engine. 
it's pretty easy to take apart. You take off the recoil cover. Uh, I didn't have the correct uh, puller for the flywheel, so I just gave it a little bit of tap uh, with a hammer, and it came right out. So I got the new crankshaft all ready to go. I took the key out, and now I can just take the crank right out. Now here's a quick shot of both crankshafts side by side. I just wanted to give them a quick measurement just to make sure that they were in fact exactly the same size and I wouldn't have any clearance issues. Um, they are dead nuts identical and I think the reason for that is the old engine that blew up really didn't have many hours on it. It probably had 10 hours on it. So um, that's all good news. The other thing we have to do on this engine is swap over the electrical. You can see on the new flywheel there's more magnets in there. That's a little higher um, current rating uh, charging system so uh, I want the exact same charging system on the on the replacement engine so I'm just going to swap over the stator and I'm going to use the old flywheel. So I guess the good news is now I have a couple of brand new spare parts that um, I can keep or maybe sell. Here I'm taking off the brand new stator coil on the crate engine because it's a different coil and different charging system. So I'm going to remove it and then take the old coil off the broken engine right here and install it right on there uh, and it'll be good to go. Here's the old coil going back onto the new engine. Used a little bit of orange Loctite on it just to uh, make sure that those screws don't loosen up. Okay, so here I am putting the cap back on the connecting rod and getting it all set. I uh, had to finagle that crankshaft around a little bit just to make sure that it's lined up right, make sure the cap's on right. I checked the clearance with the plastic gauge. It was exactly the same, two thousandths. So um, I believe the torque on it is 180 inch-pounds. So um, if you have to take it off, uh, that's what I would use. That's a quarter inch torque wrench, so it's, it's pretty easy. Now here's a shot of the engine with all the components stuffed back in it. So I put the cam shaft in it, the two tappets, and the balance shaft, and uh, of course everything is timed by the dots. One of the things I forgot to mention um, was make sure that you take the valve cover off the top of the engine and um, slide the uh, push rods out because when you put everything back in you, you do have to drop the push rods back in again from the top and then you can probably just um, push the valve down with your finger and, and slide the rocker back over it. You may not even have to adjust it but uh, I didn't show that here I just forgot to show that. Here I'm cleaning up the face of the sump cover so I can mate the two back together. I was fortunate enough to um, be able to split it without ruining the gasket. That gasket's like 35 bucks and you can't find them. So I, I do have one. I did buy one, but uh, I don't need it now. Um, I'm using a little bit of um, ether to clean the face off so get it nice and clean. And I'm using a little bit of the um, Toyota 103 um, gasket material. It's like a makes a gasket and it's um, a glue and a gasket all in one. I use it on oil, uh, some covers and things like that on uh, Toyota products. It's a really good product so I just figured I'd put a little bit on there just um, for reassurance just because I don't want any leaks. Now I'm putting the cover on. Make sure you have the alignment pins in there and everything it should go on pretty smoothly. I'm just trying to be real careful. I don't want any of the gears to pop out. Um, but it went on pretty smoothly. I'm putting the sump cover bolts back in. I used a little bit of Loctite on them. They had some kind of a factory Loctite on them. So this is uh, orange. It's like a red, but it's supposed to be removable. But hopefully we won't ever have to do that again. I don't anticipate this engine ever having to come apart again. Now that we're all set with the sump, let's put the flywheel on. Once you've got your keyway in there, put the flywheel on, line the key up, and slide it on. Set the torque to 100 foot-pounds for that flywheel. Another thing you want to check is make sure the ignition coil is lined up properly. I moved mine when I was fooling with it so I have to go back and make sure that the clearance is set to and it's about seven or eight thousandths. 
Okay, it's all set now. I put the recoil cover on, put the guards back on, filled it up with oil, put a little gas in it, and mounted it on the machine. And it looks like it's all ready to go. I've given it a pull to make sure the compression's good on it. Again, make sure you um, set your push rods and your rockers uh, and get that valve cover back on before you uh, start it, give it a pull. If you give it a pull with, without the ignition on, just make sure that it feels correct.